Representative Harvey, you stated in this week's weekly column that the new homes bonus is forcing Nuneaton and Bedworth to increase the housing house building in our area. He expressed the opinion that housing expansion should be based on local need. Is that correct? According to the ONS, the projected increased population between now and 2037 will be more heavily influenced by migration and not natural change for deaths. Therefore, any projected figures for additional housing are clearly not based on local need. Will you therefore agree not to endorse the recommendations of this Economic Prosperity Board? And can I have the answer in writing, please? I did point out, Mr. Brown, that you're not to ask questions here. You can ask questions at the full council. When, when, hang on. When can I ask questions? If I want that question answered... You can, can ask, ask a question on the 18th of February by putting in the question by noon on the 17th of February. You have been to many meetings. I have. I have. I have the procedure. It's still, it's still to me, it's still anathema to me that you get away with such a... All right, I have to agree with it, but it's you people who make, make the decision to, to behave like you do, not us. We don't like it. You do. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll win win. Submitted to Warwickshire County Council revealed that the number of secondary school pupils in class sizes of 30 or more in the meter has doubled since 2010. And the number of primary school pupils in class sizes of 30 or more in the meter has increased by almost 300 in the last year alone. Doctor surgeries have been reported as being at breaking point due to rising workloads and falling resources. And ambulance services, as we know, have cited multiple instances where they've waited outside A&E for more than an hour for patients to be handed over to hospital care. How can the council conceive of adding another 618 houses every single year between now and 2031 to our already overburdened services and infrastructure? I urge you, on behalf of the people of this borough, to put their quality of life, our quality of life, before financial gain and to reject this proposal. Thank you. Mrs. Condor. Transparency. 
and I really would like there to be public consultation because it is so, so important. The consultation we have had on the borough plan is not based on these figures, so does that make all the, the consultation that we've done absolutely meaningless and we go back to the beginning? You know, all these questions just aren't being answered. So I really would like you to you know, not take these figures and have it scrutinised and some public consultation, please. Thank you. Any questions to Mrs. Kandaka? Just the one. If rugby are taking 5,000 more than what um, they could be taking, and Stratford upon Avon are taking between 10,000 and 11,100, which is almost 1,000 more than what they're expecting, and Warwick are taking 2,000 more than they expected, and each district was involved in. Um, this joint cooperation, right? Why do you think they haven't disagreed with it? Because they have actually got jobs for, for these people. If there were that number of jobs available in the Neaton and they, I felt there was actually a need, then you know I'd say, okay, fine, we need these homes. We're not creating the jobs. The figures from Warwickshire County Council, which were on the um, it was the Planning and Environment OSP a week or two back, and they showed that there had actually been a net decline in the, you know, the net drop in the number of jobs in the Neat. And when I say the Neat, I mean the, you know, the borough as a whole. And you know, even if a thousand jobs were created tomorrow in the Neat and things, we wouldn't need any extra homes. There are enough people looking for jobs, or not even actively looking. You know, people like myself, if they you know. Jobs were easily available, then I probably would have found myself another job. But I'm not counted in the statistics because I'm not claiming. Mm. Any other questions? Thank you, Mrs. Conger. Councillor <laughs> Wilson. Thank you, Chair. I'm also speaking to urge Cabinet to reject this motion before them today. There is evidence which has been supplied by the Planning Policy Department, which is the predication of most of uh, what is in there today. It wouldn't have taken much to add this to the Cabinet report for all the residents to have seen. It takes a council to have to ask for it, when really, this is the whole fundamental principle of where the evidence, the alleged evidence, has brought it to the residents deserve the right to actually be able to comment on and see. For example, by looking at the figures, it shows that employment growth is scheduled to be 9.7%. We are by far the lowest in the sub-region for employment growth. We are also the largest domiciliary town in the region where people commute out of here. By the, to the extent of the commuting ratio of 1.35, by far the highest, the next one below us being 1.07, which is Stratford. We are accepting homes for other areas who won't be working in this area. Councillor Phillips made great play on his question earlier about how all the other authorities are accepting an additional increase. That is their decision. But I haven't voted for that. I haven't uh, had the say-so from my residents to do that. And the residents here tonight, quite clearly, aren't giving their consent to such a proposition. The consultation should happen before we accept this. The consultation, which in my view, which happened last year, was already flawed, never even countenanced 9,900 additional homes. And I dread to think what will happen for the next consultation, which is already delayed. And we won't, by all accounts, probably have a borough plan in place until 2017, which places us at great danger, and we are by far the furthest behind our neighbours. When we accepted the 7,900 homes target, it was based on a 2% growth, which we had four years ago in the Oxford Economics Report. Accepting 9,900 is 2.5% growth over the course. Now, the Oxford Economics Report already said that 2% was at the upper end of being deliverable. They said it was exceedingly optimistic and would be challenging to achieve. 2.5% is completely out of the ballpark for us to achieve. 
The residents deserve a say in the additional housing they're going to take. We are taking decisions which will affect not only us, but our children and their children as well, because this is decades which will happen. The infrastructure just isn't here. And the existing borough plan of consultation, which we haven't even had the courtesy or a proper response to, was greatly uh, derided by residents of the public. And I think that residents will show this the same disdain as they did for the consultation. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Are there any questions to Councillor Wilson? Yeah. Have you read the Strategic Housing Market Assessment? Yes, I have. Good. That's all right then, because you've obviously done your background work on that. Have you any objections to people in this borough, young people growing up, actually commuting out to work in Coventry, Birmingham, Leicester, Hinkley, in neighbouring major kind work environments, and coming and living in their own town? No, I don't, and I do myself. However, the point is that we should be asked. Have you asked any of the residents of the borough whether they're willing to accept an additional 2,000 homes plus potential overspill from the rest which hasn't been allocated and the overspill from Coventry. If the residents say yes, then I will accept it. But if they don't and they haven't had the opportunity, that is their right. And have you also read the National Planning Framework and about the duty to cooperate? Yes, I have. Yeah. And do you know if what would happen if we went to the public and said, do you accept these extra 2,000 houses? What would happen to the borough plan if the public said no? We got in the government's plan of the duty to cooperate. Yes, there is the potential that the borough plan, plan could be refused. There is the potential. It will. It will. There is already al already the potential with the harebrained schemes you've already put in there that yeah. it will be refused anyway. Yeah. <laughs> You've already put a proposal for a road through my ward, which nobody wants, nobody needs, and the county council says can't be delivered. I think, Mr. Wilson, the councillor, finally, Jeff, that that proposal was a um, thesis, an idea. You, your petition against something that wasn't even on the board to happen, but only a consideration. <laughs> then why did you put it in the Thank you. The procedure is that you are given three minutes to speak and people can ask a question. So, I'm sorry, Councillor Phillips, you're also at fault. Yeah, I'm actually at fault, George. Yeah. It's to ask Councillor uh, Wilson any questions on what he's said. Any other questions? No? Thank you, Jack. Thank you very much. Councillor Trones. simple point to make tonight uh, and it is that you are approaching as a council, as a controlling group of the council, a line, a line which probably would be wise not to step over. Um, if we accept Councillor Lloyd's assertions in the press that there's no party politics involved, there's no deliberate delaying, and that the political leadership of this council have not done anything to hold back the borough plan and that it's been progressed as best as they are capable and then that's one thing. Uh, in short, for people here, it means that they spent years trying to finalise the borough plan but have failed to do so with no immediate end in sight. It's quite another thing, however, to voluntarily increase the housing target by thousands of homes when you've already admitted that producing a proper borough plan so far is beyond you. In that context, it can only be seen as reckless to voluntarily increase the target. And such reckless action can only expose the council to increased risk risk of legal challenges, and I would remind everyone here that the council has already wasted hundreds of thousands of pounds on lost planning appeals. It also raises the issue of competency, and whether options like special measures would have to be explored uh, to save residents and council taxpayers from this reckless action. Other councils, as we've heard here tonight, might be in a position to take additional new build, but Nuneaton and Bedworth 
by the fact that it's already admitted that it has been incapable of producing a plan for 7,000 of our houses, cannot now credibly claim at this point that it is right to voluntary incre voluntarily increase the target to nearly 10,000. May I suggest that the Council stop and think again about crossing a line that would plunge local planning potentially into chaos and expose the Council taxpayers to increased risk and residents to unnecessary stress and uncertainty. Any questions to Councillor Tremont? Councillor Tremont, you talk about reckless action. Um, can you um, tell me what would happen if we do not cooperate with neighbouring authorities? Well, cooperation is one thing, Councillor. That doesn't mean that you have to accept whatever is suggested to you. The fact is that through the Council's own actions, it's tried to produce a borough plan, we've been told, but thus far has not been able to do so you are simply not in a position to credibly be able to take more houses at this stage. So it's a question of you haven't put yourselves in a position to be able to cooperate. Now, maybe rugby is in a better position if they have a plan adopted and they're also in a development zone and, and other factors. Well, I'll answer Any other questions to Councillor Tremont? Thank you. I, I, to some extent, welcome the work that's going on between Warwickshire and Leicestershire here. It, it, it's excellent, mainly because my ward is right in the middle of the two counties and has been built right up to the edge of the border. You well know, I've protest, been protesting against that for some time now. Uh, I wouldn't even quibble to some extent about the numbers here, because as has been said, that new building is required in the country as a whole. Um, to an answer a question earlier from Councillor Phillips to, uh, to Councillor Wilson, uh, I did read all these uh, the studies that, that Councillor Wilson did, and, and I looked into the background of that, and it becomes very, very, very complex. And I, I would suggest it is very flawed, actually. I, I, I can't find... Uh, eventually, you keep going back and back, and, and the, the facts disappear in a, a load of words, in fact. Um, if, if you look at that, page 12 of, of the uh, Prosperity Board program, which came in uh, on the 10th of October, the very first point under the background of that was to agree that all councils should pr proceed and adopt the core strategies. There's no doubt housing is required, and, and in these days, money is only a community town, as, as the, you know, the book, which I, I managed to buy very cheaply last, last year for a few pennies, called the Crap Town Returns, which unfortunately had Nuneaton and, and, and Coventry in it, um, included. Uh, it showed very clearly. Uh, in, in my ward, the A47 disappears. It used to go all the way from Birmingham to Great Yarmouth. The change has been going on. All of the new build recently, unfortunately, is being lost on appeal, if, if nothing has gone to appeal yet, but it, in, in actual fact, mine wouldn't be lost on appeal. I, I would ask that you take one to, to appeal and see what happens. In actual fact, the current borough plan would undoubtedly be rejected on, on many, many grounds. The, the one thing that could help has already been turned down by the County Council, a bypass road down Golf Drive to, to bypass the East Bay. This The whole uh, uh, transport system it just doesn't make sense in the nature. It, you really need to look at that. I understand the time scales that you're in trouble with here, but you really need to, and as I say, the numbers don't matter so much. The main problem is you're building in the wrong place. You, you, you've already said that you want 5,000 houses on my side of town. Unfortunately, they are getting built because of lot of the worries about the fields. Sorry, Chair. Okay, thank you. Any questions to uh, Councillor Foster? 
Councillor Lloyd. Um, same question to Councillor Foster. You, you mentioned about the figures and uh, they don't quibble over a lot of the figures. Um, what would happen um, to the borough plan if uh, we refused to cooperate with those questions? I understand that your question that this is almost blackmail, you know. Uh, I understand that. But, but what the fault is with yourself, uh, Councillor Lloyd. You should be making sure that this borough plan comes to consultation and gets passed. Because it was promised for the people. It was supposed to come to consultation and spend time for eventual passing in autumn. And it didn't happen. Dodging the question, can I ask again? No, no, no. 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 Uh, could you stop shouting from the back, please? Yes. We can't help we have can't. quite. We have an open uh, situation where people are allowed to speak to the cabinet, which doesn't happen in many other councils. And we'd like to hear what the speaker has to say. And shouting from the back does not help. Thank you. I, I thought I'd answered the question. Okay. Okay. If I have, please, please. No, we're we, not going to ask the same question. Okay. Um, just you, you mentioned uh, a, a link round, a link round um, uh, that's coming through. It's been um, stopped by the county council. Uh, was it just the county council that stopped that? Who else stopped it? Does anybody else stop it as well? I, I don't know the full background of that, but, but there's no doubt, there is no doubt that that will cause rather big problems to the ongoing programs that you have. Because the next problem we have on East Bay roundabout is, you know, we need, already need a, uh, an extra lane put on that because it's completely full right now. <laughs> Yet we have another 400 houses almost being built on the East Bay corner coming forward right now. And I'm not, I, I'm on the planning committee, so I'm not uh, expressing my views on how I'm going to vote at this stage. Um, Thank you for being very honest, man. Yeah. Councillor Foster, do you think? that a five, regarding appeals, etc., do you think that a five-year monitorium <coughs> should have been passed by this government right, to stop the requirement to have a five-year housing supply? I say that because in the year 2008, when the downturn happened and no one was building, it suddenly found then that no matter what your um, target number for housing would be, there would always be a lapse there until you caught up, whereby you would have housing by appeal, even if you had a borough plan. Nearly all the appeals are affected by this five-year requirement for councils to have a five-year housing supply. Do you think it would be in the best interest for this government to actually give us or reduce it to a two-year or three-year? Just to be clear on that, you mentioned rugby earlier. Rugby do have a borough plan, and, and they also have space to build. So the fact that they're taking another four or five thousand houses is, is fine. I think non Eaton could do the same, but they couldn't be, be being built in the areas they, where you're currently building them. There's very good areas. Unfortunately, you'd probably have to bring Greenbelt back, if to some extent. We, we do have a lot of Greenbelt that the public never see. I don't know why so much fuss is made about Greenbelt sometimes, because there are parts around by the, the motorways, uh, which, which, what, what do you do with that? It, it, it's much better than the building in uh, other places, such as you are in the St. Nicholas Ward. You're creating health issues for older pensioners, such as myself, I live in that ward. Uh, as you know, my question, which I asked in December, um, when, the, when the Mayor of Paris is stopping all uh, diesel engine cars going into Paris by uh, 2020, and, and Boris Johnson is going to do the same by about 2026. And, and, and diesel engine vehicles will stop it existing in the next 30 years, I suppose. But that will happen. It's health issues I'm concerned about here. You know, that the health program later on in the morning, I guess. If I can just get it straight, Councillor, are you saying that we must build house, these extra houses, but not on your side of the town? No, the, the, they're a big issue. My, that's not the point I'm making. I, I'm talking about health issues. All of the traffic which you are currently riding through from Leicestershire in through the centre of the town, as Taylor Rogan used to say, which is the only town which where the 
where the ring road goes straight through the middle. Mm -hmm. Could I just ask you on that, councillor? You yes. were a county councillor. Yes. Do you realise that this council is not the highway authority? The county council is the highway authority. We do not control roads. But you were a county councillor, so I would have imagined you I have been speaking to the county council frequently this week. And the one issue, as you know, is air quality. I have spoken about it over the last two years frequently. And, and it doesn't get addressed properly. It just doesn't. No, I'm saying you don't say that we are not the road authority. No, the county council have no responsibility for air quality. It's the borough council. But for the highways, do you accept the county council of the highways authority? You, of course they are. I, I was talking right. to them. Right. Thank you. Any other questions to Councillor Foster? Thank you very much. Thank you. Right.